Hi. Hi. Sebastian, my name is uh, Tony Hall. Tony, hi. And this is my book, uh, The American Empire in the Fourth World. Wow, that's and, a big uh, book. Cool. The second volume is just about to come out, Earth and Property. Excellent. And, Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Um, do you think there's any possibility, uh, when you um, said that the murder of Massoud, the leader of the Northern Alliance, the what do they call him, the Lion of... You know, a very uh, fine, brave leader. Do you think there's any possibility? Like my view is the, the he was probably assassinated as part of the 9/11 plot, as he said. But the plotters would be more like within the U.S. system or within the war machine of the U.S. system, and and it was part of the 9/11 plot. Have you given that any consideration? Uh, not really. Yeah, I mean, it, you do talk about Al Qaeda as if it's sort of an external thing. You don't acknowledge the internal nature of, of uh, you know, how how it was recruited within the United States. How uh, it was the training took place not only in Afghanistan but in Fort Bragg. Um, isn't it sort of intellectually dishonest not to acknowledge the Al Qaeda is not just something external to the to the um, War machine, but it's from within our side, if you like. You know, I, you know, I think if there was good information on that, people would be very interested in it. So, well, there's lots, there's tons yeah. of good yeah. information. It's, it's it's actually, it's it's Peter actually, Dale Scott's hold, uh, hold, professor. Hold on, hold on yeah. a second. It's not a conversation I'm going to have with you right now. Treason Treason. against the, the, I mean, because basically, you, you, you excuse me. Right. 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 No, no, let me. Wait, 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 excuse me. He just yeah. said, in no, a conversation, so, okay. gentlemen, the library is closed. Yeah. There is such a thing as moral courage. And, uh, I need you to hide, to like, hide, hide I'm with not going to ask you again. The, the threats yeah. to the republic See are not in the hills of Afghanistan. Stop yelling at me. No. You're, you're the, yelling, the, sir. The, the, you're the yelling, sir. threats. Exit the building. Stop yelling at me. Exit the building. Stop yelling at me. Please leave. That's trespassing if you do not leave. Stop sir. yelling at me. Okay, it's but trespassing. The building, if you do sir. Not Treason leave. is going on in this it's country, Mr. Younger. It's trespassing, sir. Why do you pretend? Well, uh, I was trying to talk about First of all, the man said in the conversation. Don't yell at me. Okay, well, get out the building again. Get out the building again. You know what? Get out the building again. Because when the man said in the conversation, you want to continue talking? Because he's a propagandist involved in murder. You got three seconds to get off the gate. Property or you get arrested for trespass. The taxpayers pay for this. You arrested for trespass. Stop yelling at me. I pay your salary. Stop yelling at me. You don't pay anything. See you later, sir. One. Why you, you later, why you sir. treat me like that? Goodbye, See you later, sir. For trying to talk Goodbye, about sir. important you, things. Goodbye, important sir. things. You, Goodbye, sir. sir. Shut that guy down. He didn't. A little propagandist, huh? <laughs> what do you say? What do you think? Why do you think he didn't want to even talk about it, huh? I, I, my jaw dropped. Uh, I'm from Canada, and uh, I thought I had a sense of how war propaganda works, but this idea that. Uh, you dehumanize the enemy. It was interesting to me the way suddenly Pakistan is is used as some, it's some kind of uh, just the very word. These are the enemies, and we're being set up. To, you know, we are at war within Pakistan, which has been a puppet since the you know it was created by the British Empire in a divide and conquer thing. To when when the British were leaving India to to set up uh, dual countries there to uh, divide the people and, and, and to advance empire in a new way. U.S. has been, you know, supporting Pakistan or the war machine in Pakistan um, and when dictators get out of control they're assassinated as Benazir Bhutto was, probably by Dick Cheney's, possibly by his assassination squads. Uh, so it was, you know, classic propaganda. Uh, it was all about the human interest stories of our boys and what brave people and what mm, courageous and thoughtful and complex people they are. Where where the other side, the so-called Taliban, which he couldn't answer really when I when I called him on it, like you say the word Taliban as if it explains it, anything. If you're Pushtun, if you're born Pushtun in in uh, that part of the world, you're going to be Taliban. It's a civil war situation. Of course, uh, you know, it was interesting, he said the assassination of Massoud, uh, who was this very well-respected, courageous leader of the Northern Alliance, was part of the 9-11 operation. 
Yeah, it probably was. Uh, the coincidence of taking out the real, a real leader to clear the way to set up your puppet leader, Hamid, Hamid Karzai, who is who worked for Unical and, and you know is, is, is a puppet, the U.S. puppet, to take out a real leader uh, just before 9-11 so you can set up your, your puppet. Uh, you know, that's fairly obvious. He said there's no written record that Al-Qaeda, there's no documentary record that Al-Qaeda is from within the, sis, within the system. I mean, it's, it's well documented. It's extremely well documented by Peter Dale Scott in The Road to 9-11 and other sources that uh, it was basically Al-Qaeda was set up. It, it means the base. Uh, as part of the U.S. effort to take down the Soviet-backed puppet regime in Afghanistan. And uh, so Al-Qaeda, any media that talks about Al-Qaeda as exclusively an external enemy and doesn't acknowledge the internal roots of Al-Qaeda, I take that as a, a signal that this is propaganda, that this is not serious journalism, that this is part of the war machine. Of course, the war machine, the real war, is to contaminate our minds. I mean, in order to do, to carry on this, you know, elevate these war budgets after the demise of the Soviet Union. Hey, you're a permanent war economy in the United States, you don't have an enemy, you have to invent an enemy. So that's what we were seeing tonight. That's what Mr. Junger, Sebastian Junger, was clearly uh, advancing the dehumanization of the of the enemy, as if this is. And then he was very clear: this is a worldwide conspiracy. These people fighting in Afghanistan are from all over the world. Therefore, that justifies our 700 bases all over the world, our Trident submarines, our militarization of space. You know, bankrupting the country denying people like publicly supported health care. I mean the health care reforms, it's still going through the the private companies. It's just another subsidy, it's just another giveaway to to the vulture capitalists who are pulling down this country and the diversion of this phony global war on terror. Look look at what happened. Look at uh, the financial debacle. Look at what was really going on as we were being pointed at Afghanistan. How convenient that the plotters uh, of 9-11 are said to live and plan you know, in caves with their flashlights just exactly where the pipeline routes need to go. And where the what opium a, a, needs to be re-regenerated. Yeah, and of course the Taliban were decreasing uh, the heroin trade uh, and, and now the Northern Alliance, Karzai's warlords, networks of warlords, is immensely increasing the flow of opium out of, out of Afghanistan. Uh, heroin, uh, you know, the, the, the illicit drug trade has always been a pillar of empire since the days of the Opium Wars. People will have seen the movie Air America and seen how much the uh, U.S. military was in bed with the drug lords in Indochina in that era. AIG, the company at the center of the financial de debacle, had, according to Mike Rupert, 500 planes and seems to have, be, have been deeply in that trade in illicit drugs. And now it's moved to Afghanistan. So uh, this war machine, wherever it goes, sides with the, with the drug dealers. The, the most powerful of the drug dealers. The idea that we're fighting, say, for the rights of women. Well, those drug lords in Afghanistan are not liberal, egalitarian. They, they oppress women. I mean, the, the, the propaganda machine, I, I, my, my, my jaw dropped when I heard that. It was just so grotesque. And so, uh, and it was so troubling to see a room full of obviously well-educated, genteel intelligentsia just go along with it as easily as they did. And these are the liberals, <laughs> yeah. supposedly. And, well, as I.F. Stone said, you know, the, the danger is on the right, but the crackdown is on the left. And, you know, we see that with Amy Goodman, with Noam Chomsky, this uh, unrelenting effort to say, well, we shouldn't even talk about 9-11, and, and, and we shouldn't even look at the evidence. Even to talk about it is somehow uh, seen as, what is it, Amy? What is it, Noam? Like, Noam Chomsky had a book on 9-11 and, and proclaimed right off the bat that this obviously came from an external enemy. Well, we know Al-Qaeda was not an external force. Sure, there are people with all kinds of wild ideas, but in the Cold War, the United States built up theocrats 
all over the world. Anybody who had a theocratic view of the future, let's have government through religion, they were automatically anti-communist. And so U.S. built up religious theocrats, including the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, the, the people now being uh, demonized as the, as the culprits of 9-11. Let's, let's get real. Let's do a little research. Let's uh, uh, get folks like Sebastian Junger uh, educated a little bit. I think he's educated. He just knew that uh, he was out of his depth. Isn't and that interesting that a man who's, you know, who found a way to face the fear of bullets couldn't even deal with a little conversation about the, the event that sort of was the reason that he was over there in some way. Well, you know, this whole phenomena of embedded journalists, journalists getting in bed with invading forces and telling their side of the story,